Today's video brought to you by Inventora. So while you're almost always guaranteed to get some random stream of consciousness from me throughout the entirety of, you know, videos here at Soap and Clay, it's usually for sure going to be at the beginning, right? And today we are not doing that. We are not going to be doing Mrs. Soap and Clay's random stream of consciousness. We are going to be talking about a sponsor for today's video. I know, I finally said yes. For those of you who know, I do not accept sponsorships because I don't much see the point in, you know, just schlepping HelloFresh and, you know, insert video game or whatever to soap makers who probably are not going to benefit from this. But today's sponsor is something that you will absolutely benefit from. It has been a game changer in my life and I am going to tell you all about it, you know, right now. So let's get to that. So I know that I am not the only one that has experienced that day ruining moment of going to make a batch of soap only to learn that I forgot to order an oil or a fragrance or whatever I needed in order to keep my production schedule on track. With everything that we have to do in the daily running of our businesses, keeping track of the materials we need or the inventory we have on hand or even where we put our recipes can feel overwhelming. It's a lot to manage and I've been living a highly stressful life for years trying to do it all. And then I tried Inventora. This program is truly amazing and the only sponsorship that I've ever accepted because the product is something the Sudzers actually need. It checks all the boxes from detailing our production price per item or ounce right down to shipping costs to saving recipes in one easy place to refer to when we need to make more. It also sends you alerts when you are running low on a product or an ingredient, which is super helpful. This user-friendly software allows you to see at a glance what your cost is for everything you buy or create, thus giving you the ability to easily and accurately price your products, but also to use when researching other options for your raw materials. Inventora also gives you the ability to input batches, which I love. So whether you're filling an order for a wholesale account or planning your spring line, it allows you to keep track of your to-do list. And it will also tell you if you have enough oils and butters and other raw materials on hand to fulfill. This software is truly the one-stop cradle-to-grave program that we as makers need and will benefit from. No more keeping track of vendor pricing in a spreadsheet and recipes in a Google Doc or a notebook or trying to search through old emails to find the last time you purchased cocoa butter and how much you spent on it. Inventora keeps track of it all. I seriously encourage any maker to try out this software. They have a free option, which allows you to track your products, materials, and costs of goods sold, as well as a business plan option with all of the bells and whistles, including easy integration with all major hosting sites like Shopify, Etsy, Wix, and WooCommerce. So your website and your inventory management software is fully synced all of the time. Click the link below, check out the software, and lower your stress levels. Do something nice for yourself. You deserve it. A big thank you to Inventora for sponsoring this video. This is a very cool software. It is software made by makers for makers, and I guarantee you guys are going to have a good time with it. So definitely, you know, check out the free version, play around with it. Let them know I sent you all of the things. And yeah, pick your jaws up off the floor. I accepted a sponsorship. It's a good one. And I will tell you more about what we are doing specifically today in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for week 12 of year three, and this week has been an FAQ week, wherein we uh, answer some questions. And this question actually came a few weeks ago on an old video, a deep dive, I think about 
coconut oil or palm oil controversy and asked, you know, if I remembered whether or not there was a castor oil controversy at some point because it was found that there was ricin in the oils. And that really actually got me thinking because it sounds a little bit devious, right? Because castor oil, as we know it, because we use it for soap, so we look at the fatty acids, castor oil contains a very unique fatty acid called ricinoleic acid. And there's really no substitution for it in any of our soaping oils. And so ricinoleic acid has some really beautiful benefits for soap in that it really helps stabilize and suspend a lather. So it's great for things like shampoo bars, or shave bars or beard washes all of the things but does it contain ricin i mean it's kind of already in the name right ricin ricinoleic acid samesies now ricin if you don't know is one of the deadliest poisons ever like ever and just a little bit of it can kill you and so on one hand, it's like, well, the logic sort of flows that if that's found in the castor bean, it must also be found in the castor oil, right? But we also have memories of probably our, our grandparents, you know, doing spoonfuls of castor oil to help out with like constipation. And so it's like, well, that definitely solidifies it. It makes your bowels do weird things. So poison. We're putting poison in our soaps. I thought this was a really interesting thing to talk about and we didn't really need a ton of time to talk about it, mostly because I don't want to give you a full deep dive on the making of castor oil and the extracting of castor oil and how ricin is then made from that because I don't want to be put on an FBI watch list again. So we're going to go talk about it in sort of, you know, broad terms, but also, you know, some interesting information about ricin. And at the end of it, we can determine whether or not castor oil is going to kill you. So let's go to the video. i doing some stamping, I think, while we talk about all things castor oil and its toxicity. Is castor oil toxic or more specifically is ricin found within the castor oil that we use and buy and consume, you know, for ingested purposes or for, you know, within our soap making. Now, castor oil obviously comes from the castor bean and so does ricin, which is, as we all know, one of the deadliest naturally occurring substances known to man at this point. So ricin, very, very big deal. And within the same bean that we get our castor oil from. And in fact, the acid that we have within castor oil is called ricinoleic acid. Ricin, ricinoleic. So that logically flows that there must be some remaining, right? No, that is not right. And you know, let me tell you why. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is because uh, apparently there was a controversy in the soap making world a number of years ago regarding castor oil and it containing ri ricin within it. And I did not find anything legitimate to back up any studies that showed that castor oil contained ricin at any point. But you know, that there was a controversy does not surprise me at all. That's not to say that didn't happen because soap makers like to say weird and inaccurate stuff all of the time. But the reason why castor oil does not contain ricin first and foremost is because ricin is not oil soluble. So it does not partition to the castor oil that we use for soap making or to ingest, even though the names sound similar. And so that means that the ricin itself is found in the waste material of, you know, actually processing the castor oil. But it's still found at very small amounts because while ricin is a very dangerous substance, mostly destroyed at temperatures above 80 degrees, so to that, even the waste doesn't have a whole lot of ricin, you know, within it. Now also with the, you know, processing of the castor oil, the castor beans, the castor beans themselves in that process are cooked and then dried and then pressed. And so a lot of that ricin is being eliminated immediately from the waste materials. But, you know, that is where ricin is found and can be made from, from the waste materials of the castor bean. Castor oil then goes on to do another filtration system. Sometimes solvents are used, depending on what type of castor you are lo looking at. But for the United States purposes, every castor oil that comes into the United States is definitely filtered 
and definitely solvent pressed just in case. Because as far as the United States goes, whenever there is a dangerous substance that can be used for, you know, biowarfare or for the greater good with biofuel or even curing cancer, which interestingly, studies are being done right now with the effects of ricin on cancer cells, they want to make sure it is heavily controlled so they can make sure that none of us get exposed to it. So again, no, castor oil does not contain ricin. But I was actually kind of curious with this whole process and wondering, you know, how likely is the exposure for the people that are processing the castor beans, right? Or if you just eat a castor bean, can you get poisoned and die? The answer for eating the castor bean is probably not die, but you can get really, really sick and, you know, wish that you were unalived anyway. So don't eat castor beans whole. But it's not likely to actually be fatal. And as far as the processing goes, because they boil them all and then they dry them out and then it's all pressed at that point, everything is done in a closed, you know, facility. So you're not exposed to any of the potential damages of the ricin. So I couldn't find anywhere that suggested that ricin exposure during the actual processing of castor oil was a thing. That doesn't mean it hasn't happened. I'm certain it probably has considering the waste product of, you know, pressing the castor bean for castor oil contains ricin. But regardless, I didn't find anything suggesting that that, you know, has occurred. What I have found in all of this is every single governmental agency out there, we've got the CDC and the NIH and the FDA and WHO, they all specifically state on their websites about ricin. All of the stuff is below in the description that if you were you know, subject to ricin poisoning, if you were poisoned by ricin, it would have to be a targeted attack at this point because that's just how strictly this is all controlled and watched out for. So it sounds like while it is a very dangerous substance and obviously avoid it at all costs, this is something that is very unlikely to lead to an accidental exposure. So is castor oil toxic? I would say, I mean, technically no, because again, it's approved as generally safe and, you know, used for things like, you know, a mild laxative or whatever. But I guess logically, if you do too much of anything, it could be considered toxic. Sure, maybe. I don't know. But not for the purposes of, you know, this and whether or not it's containing, you know, something that's incredibly dangerous. And also keep in mind that castor oil, not used in a ton of products outside of soap, and the one that it's used in the most is lipstick, at like 81% of the total formulation of most lipsticks, apparently, which is kind of interesting. And think about how often you are eating that then off of your lips. So just something to keep in mind if you're still concerned about whether or not castor oil itself is toxic. But, you know, if you're still concerned about it being found within your castor oil, potentially, since ricin is actually destroyed at 80 degrees, so that's like 180 degrees Fahrenheit, right? That's another, you know, tick in the book for sea popping your soaps. So, you know, if there's any remaining, you know, ricin within your castor oil, which there's not, it'll get burned off at that point. It's really just an attempt of me to, you know, convince you to sea pop because I love sea popping. That's my favorite. But yes, it's definitely an interesting query. It was something that apparently was big enough that it blew up for a little bit in the soaping community and everyone was afraid to use castor oil for a while. But again, as I said, I found nothing that actually backed up. No studies, nothing, just anecdotal that backed up the findings of ricin within castor oil. So now that we've been able to explore that, which was a ton of fun, you know, it's always nice to remember that the stuff that you hear on the soap forums and all of the outrage and the, I don't know, griping about things and, you know, Pyrex exploding and any other thing you hear, a lot of it is anecdotal and or just, you know, a friend of a friend of a friend said this. And so be logical, be rational and uh, take all of that with a very large grain of salt, especially if you don't have the time to research the things on your own. But of course, I always recommend researching things on your own. But there it is, the down and dirty of castor oil and its toxicity.
And there you have it, a fast and dirty history of castor oil. And yeah, again, fast and dirty because while it does, you know, have enough information there to do a full deep dive, like I've done with coconut oil or cocoa butter, etc., I really don't want to uh, help people figure out how to make ricin because it's actually a very, very terrible, terrible poison and it again it will kill you dead but because of the extraction process and the way that the castor oil is removed from the castor bean there is no chance that it contains ricin and is therefore dangerous or poisonous there is not a country in the world that would allow that to be sold or imported or exported because ricin is so toxic and as I pointed out, according to multiple governmental websites, you know, so the World Health Organization, our governmental websites in the States, a couple other ones, all of the uh, .govs and everything that I've looked at, they have all specifically stated that in order to be exposed to ricin and to actually have ricin poisoning at this point, it's got to be a targeted attack. They have it pretty dialed in and they look for it pretty bigly. So there's that. It's an interesting thing though. And I did not find any good information suggesting that there was ever a controversy in soap, but like a legitimate controversy, like there were actual cases, confirmed cases and studies of castor oil containing ricin. But that doesn't mean that soapers weren't saying weird things because soapers love to say weird things all the time. So there's that. I hope you guys found this informative. It was definitely fun for me because I'd actually never really considered it. So thank you to the Sudser that asked that because it really did help me. I got to learn something too and do a little, you know, research that will probably still end me up on an FBI watch list. Thank you Sudsers for existing, for joining me today. I really hope you had a good time. I hope that you go and check out the sponsor. A big thank you again to Inventora for sponsoring this. I appreciate you. I appreciate your software. I have been approached by a number of people, a number of businesses over the years to do sponsorships, including a software platform that looks a lot like this one. And I've declined them because I'm not going to encourage the Sudzers to use something that's not going to benefit them. And this one really will. So go check it out. Go use the link below. That's my affiliate link thing, you know, that will tell Inventora that I've done a good job. So please go do that. Thank you. And uh, go test out the software. There's a free download for it. Go, you know, play with it see if you like it. And uh, yeah, I think you will. Speaking of liking it, I think we might do a members only live stream and you guys can see how I'm currently using it. And I think it'll be a ton of fun. So I am out of here in the course of the time that I've been here. It started like torrential downpouring rain. And I'm actually really concerned that you can hear it in the audio and I'm not going to be able to get it out. So I'm going to close this because it'll give me less footage to have to try to figure out how to get torrential downpour rain out of my audio. So thank you again for joining me. I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.